Welcome to Shit You Should Wipe podcast with me, Dr. Debbie, your clarity wizard, life coach, and ex scientist. This is the place for kind humans who want their life to feel as good on the inside as they look on the outside. To achieve their life transition goal and live by design, not by default. Who want to experience personal growth, not personal change. And who want to experience more clarity, joy, and bravery. If you want to know what that means in practice, keep listening. Hello friends and welcome back in my podcast bubble. I was actually going to open my bubble today and work with the door and windows open because it's really nice outside. And then someone outside decided to use a chainsaw. So hopefully you won't be able to hear it too much. Remember how last week we talked about uh, what shame is and how to unshame? If not, go back one episode. It's called What's Wrong With Me? Well, today I want to shift gears and become more proactive with, with shame. So we don't wait to have shame to unshame, but rather we build shame immunity. The same way you build your system immunity by exposing yourself or uh, getting a vaccine. So as per last week, some of the things I talked about, to, I will talk about today, I learned as part of my continuing education, more particularly from the Shame Clinic by David Bedrick and Simon Sol, and also from, uh, well, actually next week, I'll talk about some concepts I, ta- I learned in Joyful Marketing by Simon Sol. And although it wasn't exactly presented the way I'm going to talk about it in the clinic, I want to share with you what I've learned or rather what I've understood. Um, And you know I like clarity and I like making categories. So I understood that, that there are mainly two ways to build shame immunity. The first one is to have boundaries. And the second one is to practice clean pain, which is the topic of the next episode. So today I want to focus on boundaries. First, let's go back on what to what a boundary is, because a lot of my clients get confused about it. Um, they often think that a boundary is a wall you put up or that it is making demands like don't do that or get out of the room or don't speak to me this way. But my definition of a boundary is something that you do in response to someone's action or behavior. It is something that you do, not something that is dependent on someone else. It's something that is in your control. So, how? (laughs) Um, First, you set the boundary. That means you tell the other person what you're going to do in response to a certain situation. So, a certain action, a certain behavior. That's setting a boundary. And the second step is to enforce or hold the boundary. And this is where a lot of people struggle because they're afraid of the consequence of holding the boundary or often because the thing they said they would do doesn't feel good. So make sure that the thing you say you're going to do uh, is something you're okay with. So let's take an example. If someone screams at you, your boundary is one, telling that person you will be walking away when screamed at and that you'll come back when you can have a conversation. That is the way, that is setting the boundary. But ideally, you would do that in advance of being screamed at, but you could also do it on the moment if you haven't had the foresight to do it before. And second step is you actually walk away. So you're enforcing or holding the boundary. So it's fairly simple. Person X screams, I leave. 
person X stops streaming and I'm available for discussion, then I come back. This is how I usually explain, you know, boundary 101 to my clients. Um, and it helps with building your shame immunity because to hold your boundary, you need to first notice that the boundary has been crossed. So this is the equivalent of witnessing the hurt that we talked about in the previous episode. And second, you need to react to the hurt. You're standing up for yourself and telling yourself that it is not okay to be hurt. And this is very important because what is more potent than the assault itself is being dismissed or ignored, which teaches you, you don't matter, you know. But what I've learned from the clinic, well, I, I kind of knew it, but it formalized it in my head, is that there are other forms of boundary setting that help you build your shame immunity. And the first one is to resist advice. This is the type of boundary that's saying, I don't want advice or fixing. And this is a tricky one, at least for me, that is the most difficult. Because I'm always tempted to think that others or experts know better. But according to David, the first characteristic of a shame person is that they don't trust themselves and their inner knowing. But the reality is that there's no expert on you. You are the expert on you. So I can hear you say, <laughs> then what's a life coach for? Well, a life coach is not an expert at life, nor is it an expert on you. It is an expert at trusting you, holding the space and providing the tools for you to recreate that relationship to you and your authority. So in practice, this boundary of advice resisting looks like saying, I don't want advice, I don't need to be fixed to friends, to coaches or therapists that might, might um, offer that. Okay, so that was your second time, uh, type of boundary. A third type of boundary is saying no to what diminishes your life force or, you know, that fire inside you. I like the idea or the image I hold in my head that we all have a little fire inside and that everything that we do in life or choose in life either fuels that fire or extinguishes that fire. So holding a boundary can be saying no to whatever diminishes that fire or that life force, which doesn't make you uh, become a selfish person all of a sudden, but it does mean you're selfish in the way that you protect your resources for the things that you want first. Okay, in practice, that might look like saying no to invitations you don't really want to say yes to, or saying no to certain um, expected commitments. Because when you do say when you do say yes to these things, right after you blame yourself for not speaking up, or for simply having emotions about about it. And if you're thinking, but there's people like people I can say cannot say no to. Well, first, firstly, I don't think that is a hundred percent true. You always have a choice, and the consequences that come with it, which you might not want. And second, sometimes we want the results of doing the things, the thing, without doing the thing. So this is also what we discuss in, in coaching. We figure out what is more important to you without shame or blame. Okay, 
So, so third type of boundary was saying no to what diminishes your life force or your fire. And the fourth type of boundary, which might be the most surprising one, is to remove. So remember when I said at the beginning of the episode, boundaries is not putting up a wall? Well, this is where I tell you I'm wrong. <laughs> Sometimes that is what a boundary is. Sometimes a boundary is removing people, places or situations from your life. In mindset coaching, we call Uh, the people, places, and situations, we call them circumstances. And in mindset coaching, circumstances are neutral. And uh, I will probably dive into that in another episode. So why would you remove something that is neutral? Well, because they are things you don't want to work on or that you don't want to fix. No, that's boundary number two. And so setting a boundary means being discerning about that. Because sometimes wanting to change your mind or thoughts about something keeps you in the I need to fix myself or my thoughts about it. When in reality you get to choose what you want to work on and what you want to love about yourself without needing to fix anything. So for example, if you have a trauma associated with a particular location, option one is to try to fix yourself, your thoughts, your emotion, to be able to go back there. And option two is to decide to avoid, avoid the place altogether depending on what is more important to you. Another example is, um, this person makes me feel, you know, whatever, insert your thing. Option one is to ask, why? Is it true? Is it real? Is it always true? Is there nuances to my experience? If it's true, is it acceptable to me? Do I want to push back? And option two is to simply remove that person from your life. And I think with either example, you can see that, oh, it's not always option one or option two. You can see that in some cases, you might want to just remove. And in some cases, you might want to empower yourself by choosing how to respond. But that is different from fixing yourself. So there you are. You've got four new ways of enforcing boundaries that will build up your shame immunity. So the first one was to recognize the hurt. This happened and it hurt. It's the classic way of setting a boundary. First you set it, then you enforce it. The second type of boundary was to resist advice. The third type of boundary was saying no to what diminishes your fire. And the fourth type was to remove or to decide not to work on a thing. I hope this was useful to you and that you will join me next week to talk about clean pain, which is part two of building shame immunity. Have a good day. Bye. And if you want fresh wipes and actionable tips every single week in your inbox, you better get on my email list. It's called The Brain Wipes. Also make sure to download The Mental Offload. It's my free ebook to learn how to start wiping things off your to-do list. It's been known to help people save precious time and energy. It's also been called What Everybody's Psychic Butthole Needs.